I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking about EFT, otherwise known as emotional freedom technique or tapping. And this is included in our couples coaching program. And as you know, we take a functional approach to fertility, including looking at food sensitivities, gut infections, environmental toxins, and mental emotional stress. And what we've found is that EFT is an amazing tool to help really pinpoint the pain and help you work through those emotional blocks that you may not even know that are that are there. So excited for you to listen to how EFT is an essential part of your fertility toolkit and how you can use it right now to begin to heal. Thanks a lot for being here and thanks for listening. Hey there, thanks so much for listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. And I've got a favor to ask you if you are enjoying learning about the functional approach to fertility, consider going to iTunes and rating and reviewing the podcast. This is how it helps the show reach more people People that are struggling with infertility, knowing that there's another approach that really can get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So all you need to do is if you're on the app or the desktop, just go in and consider leaving a five-star rating and leave a review. And there is step-by-step instructions in the show notes showing you exactly how to do that. So if you can just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes right now, you can pause this, this recording, come back, leave the review. It would really mean the world to me and help others that are on the fertility journey as well. Take care. Hey there. I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the Supercharger Fertility Discovery Call is for action takers really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B-fertile.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, F-A-B-fertile.com and click on book a free call. One theme that keeps coming up with the couples in our Fab Fertile Couples Coaching Program is sleep. Whether it's insomnia, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up at night, or feeling tired when we wake up, sleep is critical for fertility and hormones. And that's why I'm so excited to have Blue Blocks as our podcast sponsor. So we're exposed to blue and green light from our phones, our tablets, our computers, indoor lights, and more. And this exposure impacts our melatonin production. Melatonin is essential for both female and male fertility. It helps determine the frequency and duration of our cycle and impacts sperm. There's lots of blue light blocking glasses on the market, but the ones from Blue Blocks, they've actually compared other popular brands and Blue Blocks block 100% of blue and green light while other brands fall short. So I have their sleep glasses. They have red lenses and the ones I have are a little translucent uh, frame and they're so stylish and really cool. And so they eliminate 100% of the blue and green light in the 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer nanometer range. So this is exact range has been shown in clinical studies to disrupt melatonin and negatively impact your sleep. So all you do is wear your sleep glasses after sunset until it's time for bed and you'll notice improved sleep after just one use. And it's also cool to use when you're flying for managing jet lag. So I got to say I was a little skeptical about the noticing uh, improvement after one use, but literally I did I use these glasses and my sleep is actually already pretty good. I use them for one day and I have to say after one day, I had the best sleep of my life. I just felt so rested. So these glasses, they ship free and they're tracked for all orders anywhere in the world. And also they have all their frames come in prescription, non-prescription and reading glasses. Plus you can send in your frames and they'll add the blue light blocking and green light blocking lenses to your frame. So this is an easy hack that you can add to your fertility toolkit. All you do is go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. Use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout and receive a 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast to receive your 15% discount. I didn't need to go to donor eggs. Obviously, mm-hmm. I don't regret it. I have beautiful children. I could have done things differently, restored. I was still cycling back in my in my 20s. I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under. Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows 
that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the, the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with infertility, and my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I'm welcoming back to the podcast, Brandy Buscow, and we're digging into the emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as tapping or EFT, and why it's an essential part of your fertility toolkit. So this episode is for you is if you can't visualize a positive outcome because you've just had too many setbacks, you feel stressed and worried all the time, and the uncertainty is driving you crazy. A well-meaning doctor has told you that you'll never conceive with your own eggs. You feel stuck and you don't know how to deal with the stress as everyone else is moving on with their lives while you feel stuck. And so definitely check out episode number six for a functional medicine one-on-one talk, plus a look at some of the tools we use to help couples conceive. And Brandy's part of my team here at Fab Fertile. She's an integral part of our couples coaching program, which uses functional lab testing, diet and lifestyle changes to dramatically improve conception. So if you're struggling with infertility, your body is desperately trying to tell you something and focusing on your health will either help you get pregnant naturally, or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, it will improve your chances of success. So Brandy is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, board certified functional wellness coach and master EFT practitioner. And she loves supporting couples so they can learn how functional medicine addresses the underlying cause of disease or illness. And so thanks so much for listening. I'm really truly grateful that you are here right now. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Brandy, excited to have you back on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So we're going into one of your favorite topics today, which is emotional freedom technique. And this is included in our couples coaching program. And we use functional testing, but also looking at the physical stressors, such as food sensitivities, gut infections, environmental toxins, but also the mental emotional stress, stress, especially if you have a diagnosis like POF, POI, low AMH, DOR, and really any infertility diagnosis where you may feel you know, stuck in, in uncertainty and it may never work and it can be very heartbreaking and painful, obviously. So we include emotional freedom technique in there if you have any blockages to, to help you. But let's, let's dig into what exactly, first of all, what exactly is the emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as EFT? Yeah, so EFT, um, like you said, stands for emotional freedom techniques. And it was originally created by Dr. Roger Callahan, who was a therapist. And he did a lot of um, talk therapy, behavioral therapy with his clients and uh, or patients because he was a doctor. He was finding that although some of his clients were able to get some relief from the issues that they were coming to him for, he couldn't quite get them all the way. And so he was becoming frustrated in trying to find other therapies that he could use with some of his toughest clients or patients to really get them past their limiting beliefs or their phobias and their fears. He happened upon um, a conference, um, a short weekend conference on Eastern medicine, and they talked a lot about the meridian system and the energy system. So, you know, some people might recognize that as like acupuncture. So, what they do in acupuncture, um, the basis that the body runs on an energy system and they have energy field. And if your energy is stagnant or not flowing correctly, then it disrupts the flow and, and it disrupts your body's ability to stay in homeostasis. He developed a very complicated version of EFT. So rather than using needles like they do in acupuncture, he was using his fingers to tap on certain acupressure points with the thought of like acupuncture, opening up those meridian areas and allowing the energy to flow. And he found it actually quite successful. One of his most um, famous cases is a woman who was afraid of the water. No matter what he did, she just could not have a shower. She could not have a bath. She would not get into a pool. 
Um, she was terrified of water. And by using the technique that he developed that is now called EFT, he was able to get her over her fear of water, which was amazing. His method was very complicated. And he had an apprentice, Gary Craig, who was an engineer and he had an engineer mind. And Gary Craig was able to take what Roger Callahan developed and bring it down to a more um, what we see nowadays as traditional EFT that you'll see on YouTube, um, you know, like the tapping solution with the Ortners and a lot of the other big names in EFT where there is just a handful of tapping points now. That part of it was developed by Gary Craig. And Gary Craig was the one who really started the whole process of teaching practitioners all over the world the benefits of EFT and how you can use it. And you can use it on many things, not just emotional issues, but um, it's been used on pain. You could do what we call surrogate tapping. So you're actually tapping for someone else. I actually do this often for my kids. So there's so many things that EFT can be used for. Yeah, I love it because as I say, and 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 was it, and we'll go into why you know why we feel it's helpful for someone trying to conceive. But yeah, and I personally used it in our had session with the Brandy in our our mindfulness fertility series. We use it there, and um, yeah, I, I I really enjoy it. I find it kind of I feel kind of buzzy afterwards, like lightheaded, and then have this really great sleep after I do it. And then just feel, if you feel kind of constricted or heavy, it just, that seems to um, melt away. But let's, let's talk about, so for you, Brainy, this is something that you, you're super passionate about EFT. So, so why has it really helped you? Along my health journey, a lot of the biggest things that I've struggled with in my health really are emotionally related. And it took me a while to figure that out. But I realized that if I didn't deal with the emotional beliefs or limiting beliefs that I had, um, or even some of the, the traumas that I had in my life, that I wasn't going to be able to get where I wanted to go. And so I, I learned about EFT from Gary Craig, and then I went and and I, did, I took a program where um, now I'm actually a master level EFT practitioner. It, it's amazingly changed how I look at things because you can uncover subconscious beliefs that you didn't even know were there and you can release them. Um, you can work through traumas and release them. Um, the best example that I can give is um, I lost both of my parents to cancer um, you know, too early. So uh, my mom, it's been three years and my dad, it's been five. After they passed away, I was really, really struggling with a lot of anxiety um, and panic attacks again because of their deaths. And I had young kids. Um, I worked with a fellow EFT practitioner. She volunteered to work with me and we went through so many different traumas that I didn't even realize were there. I thought to myself, oh, I dealt with that it's not bothering me, but it actually did. And we, we tapped through them and were able to release them. And, and I was able to not say like I processed their death and I'm over it because I don't think you ever get over the loss of a parent, but I was able to process enough that I no longer had that anxiety and fear that was crippling me because I just lost my parents and I was afraid that I was going to, it was going to happen to me and I was going to leave my kids. That's the most powerful example of recently that I've used EFT for. And I just love how easy it is. You can do it from home. It's gentle. You don't necessarily even need to talk about the traumas to work on them and release them. Um, it's a very, it's a very self-empowering process. Yeah. And then for someone, and thanks for sharing that. And if you wanted to uh, listen to Brandy's story, she talks about her journey, how she found the functional approach and the functional medicine approach for um, anxiety and her and how she healed healed that and then yeah it's just this ongoing journey here and I know for me from a you know I do all the diet stuff too it's interesting I was off last week and I, I came back and I'm like all now I'm back and my shoulders all freaking tense again and and I got a headache and whatever and I'm like oh like a lot of this stuff is is stress and you can eat this you know be eat this great diet non -to non toxic products and all that stuff, but addressing the mental emotional stuff and really your patterns and how you keep showing up the same way over and over again. And so really for someone that's trying to conceive, you know, we include this as you're saying in part of our, the couples coaching program. And especially if you've been told, you know, maybe it's donor eggs for you that, that that's the only option, or you have a very low chance of this working, or even like with unexplained infertility, when you don't even know what it is, and it can, can feel disempowering looking at 
EFT is part of that. So you can be able to see, you know, visualize a positive way forward. Because especially if you are in a very dark spot right now, and you're like, I can't even visualize this working. That's when we would we would bring in EFT. So, so can you talk about that, Brandy, how that's going to help with someone who's trying to conceive? Yeah. So one of the things, um, I mean, regardless of your diagnosis, I, I work with clients in EFT all over the map with different issues. But one of the things that I've seen very commonly in working with um, women who have an infertility diagnosis is they're so focused on the end goal that they've actually are in a way blocking their subconscious from seeing anything else. A lot of times they don't, it's a subconscious thing, you don't realize it. Um, And it's in a way, it's a protective mechanism. So the brain is really smart and the body is really smart. It wants to protect you. And so when you have habits that happen on a regular basis or things that happen to you on a regular basis and you, then you get frustrated and you say, why is this always happening to me? Why do I always do the same thing? Because there's something that happened in your past and it doesn't need to be significant. So that's one thing I also want to point out to people is that a lot of people minimize things that happen to them in their lives and think to themselves, oh, it wasn't that big of a deal. There's people who have way bigger problems. But at the time that something happened, it could have been a big deal and and it, it was um, traumatic to you. And so it left an impression in your subconscious and your subconscious decided at that moment that from that point forward, anytime that something happens that triggers that same feeling, it needs to protect you. And it needs to protect you by, you know, having you constantly shove down your feelings. It needs to protect you redoing the same patterns, self-sabotage, negative thoughts, negative emotions. You know, the people that say, well, I need to think about all of the negative things so that my brain can be prepared for worst case scenario. That's a protective mechanism. Because your brain has decided we cannot be caught off guard. So we have to go down this worst case scenario path every single time so that we can re- be prepared for everything. And while it's nice that our subconscious mind is doing that in trying to protect us, it's not always in our best interest. And so oftentimes when I'm working with women and we, we, we get to that point where we start to dig in, we actually go to the subconscious mind and we say, thank you for protecting me. But what you're doing for me right now is not serving me and it's blocking me from my goals. And this is very, very common, like I said, with women who have an infertility diagnosis and and are having trouble conceiving, they're so focused on that end goal that their mind is completely shut off to any other possibility. And in a sense, it's actually blocking and signaling to your body. It's signaling to the rest of your body that we're in a state of stress. It has to happen this way. If it doesn't happen this way, then nothing is going to work. And so you are subconsciously sending messages to your body and you don't even know that you're doing it. Yeah, especially with that controlling piece. Typically, we're working with a type A controlling person. It's like impatient, similar to myself, like controlling, impatient. I want to plan everything. And yeah, being very, as you're saying, goal focused. The goal obviously is to have the baby. Now, our functional approach is looking at your health first and then ensuring healthy pregnancy and healthy uh, postpartum and healthy baby. But yeah, it's it's hard when you're stuck in that that end goal, which is very stressful when you're trying to control it and it's not working. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I know everybody hates the saying of, you know, when we stopped trying, it happened. But part of the reason for that is because you you stopped focusing on that end goal, which allowed your subconscious mind to be open to all of the possibilities and ways that you could become pregnant and have a child. And so one of the other things that I also bring into a lot of my sessions with women is this idea, like you said, Sarah, of control. You have put in your brain this, this is exactly how it's supposed to happen. And if it does not follow this path, I need to do something else to tighten those reins and control it even more. But sometimes, and and a lot of times we are not open to allowing this thought to come into our head. Maybe this is not the right time. Maybe this was supposed to happen this way because something bigger is on the horizon. And when we are so focused on that goal and we are tightening the control even more and controlling every single aspect, controlling our food, controlling our sleep, controlling all of these things, 
we're not allowing ourselves to get to that other side to see the reason that we're going through this and see that amazing possibility. We're blocking that from happening because all of our focus is just on control. And so all of the energy systems in your body are blocked off like a brick wall and you're not able to receive messages or intuition or possibilities to happen control and and anger are very you know surprisingly high vibration emotions and they can override some other things and so if you can't acknowledge that that's what's happening and release it and allow your mind to be open to other possibilities it's very very hard to get past it um and, and for some people, they don't even realize that they're doing it. I mean, control is just one of the reasons. Some of the other common reasons I see is there's a lot of women that have a subconscious belief that it's not safe to bring a child into this world. It's so common for this belief to come up. Um, another belief that comes up often is if you have had a child and then you're having secondary infertility, a very common belief, subconscious belief is I can I can't take care of two children. It's scary. I can't do it. So that, it, you know, your subconscious is like, well, we can't let that happen because you're not safe. You don't think that you can do it. It's going to be too hard. So we're not going to allow it to happen. There, if you, if you start to really dig into it, there's so many different subconscious beliefs that you don't even know are there that are blocking a lot of times um, your ability to move forward. Yeah, especially as we record this right now, obviously, you know, in the middle of, of COVID and things like that, I speak to people all the time saying, you know, yeah, not safe. To, you know, why am I trying right now anyways? It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to bring a child into this, this world right now. And another one is for, with secondary infertility is traumatic birth experiences where, you know, thinking about that and and depending on what it, what it was and maybe not even being able to classify like I typically, it's interesting for me because I even reframed, you know, POF and POI when I was diagnosed, I actually thought other people had it worse than me. I was like, okay, you know, I don't have to go through years of treatments. I'll just go right to donor eggs. I had refra reframed this whole entire thing in my mind. And even like when I had my daughter, it was like 18 hours of labor and then I had to do a C-section. She wouldn't come out. And at the end of it, I remember the nurse saying to me, Sarah, you can cry now, you know, it's okay. And I was like, what? Oh, I'm just like here, like just pushing away. Obviously I was in pain and everything, but um, yeah, like when you're talking about that control and anger, like that is, that's like my default where I'm like, oh, okay, I must control this and I'll be really, really pissed off about a lot of stuff. And then, you know, but underneath that is being able to let that go because otherwise, again, my shoulders are at my ears and I'm like pissed off all the time. So it is kind of seeing some of, some of your patterns in there, but just back to the traumatic birth, Brandy, what are you, because this is a common one that we see. It is. And again, it's one of those things where you can repattern yourself <laughs> to experiencing that again. So, you know, you can go one of two ways. There is a subconscious belief that I am scared and I cannot have this happen again. So we're just not, we're just not going to get, allow you to get pregnant. Your subconscious will, will just do that. Even though logically, and this is the thing, our logical mind, we can, we can logically think things and we can say to ourselves, well, that doesn't make sense and that's silly and that's fine. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to plan and everything's going to be fine. But that's not addressing that subconscious belief that it wasn't safe and that it was a trauma and that you really do actually need to go back and and address that trauma. You need to feel those feelings. You need to grieve for the process. You need to accept what happened and then also release any expectation and control for the next time. And it's very hard for people to do that. Um, I can tell you from experience, I repatterned each birth because I never dealt with the original one. It was each time it was, I look back now and I realize that there was traumas that if I had gone back with the tools I have now and were able to just sit in the feeling that I had from those experiences and allow myself to grieve and feel all of the range of emotions, the anger, the sadness, the grief, the disappointment, all of those things, and then let go of the expectation and not try to control the situation. The second time, 
probably would have been different, but I had so much control and I kept telling myself, I'm not going to go into labor early. She's not going to be premature. And this is how it's going to happen. And this is going to how it's going to happen. And it ended up with my daughter, who was my second um, birth. I was in labor for almost 20 hours and she was in fetal distress and I wasn't dilating and I had to have an emergency C-section. And then I had a lot of issues afterwards. And I look back now and I realize it was because I was controlling it and I didn't didn't allow myself to process what happened when I had gave birth to my twins. And so it's very, very important for us to stop minimizing our experiences and to stop minimizing our feelings because that is not doing you any service at all. It's actually a disservice. In order for you to move forward, you need to acknowledge those past traumas, even though you logically in your mind, don't think it's a trauma. It was for you and you need to acknowledge it and process it. And for some people, it's very hard to do that because it, there's a lot of emotions. And that's another thing with EFT is that because there's so many emotions behind certain situations, we are even scared to go there because we are afraid of what is going to come out of us when we actually address a situation. And that's where EFT can be so powerful because we can guide you through the process of releasing that trauma and releasing those emotions in a way where you don't need to be scared of what's going to come out of you when you do. Yeah, because of avoiding it, that's just prolonging it, right? Not, not looking at it, then it just keeps coming up over and over again. Another one is the afraid of being, you know, you're not going to be a good parent. I, I had, I don't know if I necessarily had this one, but I, I had... I know my friends, like I had never babysat before. I'd never, I was never one that saw a baby and ran over and held the baby. I was like, I saw a baby. I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do? Yeah, like around around that, I was very, I hadn't grown up around a lot of kids. I hadn't, didn't have a lot of experience around kids. Obviously, you know, when I had my children, that, that changed, but um, maybe some limiting beliefs too around how this comes up as well, like how, how you'd be as a parent. You can talk about that one. Yeah, and again, that's another common one. And it's probably something that every single <laughs> parent thinks of. I mean, I think every single woman who has been pregnant has thought that to themselves and thought, oh God, I don't know what I'm doing and I can't do this. And they're terrified. It's a normal, it's a very, very normal emotion. But for some people, because of things that they've experienced maybe in their past, they will have the sub subconscious belief of, well, there's no way I can be a good parent. So I cannot bring a child in this world because I'm not going to be able to parent them well. And they're going to, I'm going to screw them up. And I can tell you every parent thinks that, but there is a subconscious belief that sometimes can block you like the fear, like the fear of it's not safe to bring a child into this world because of experiences going on, like you said, Sarah, right now with the COVID situation, but even experiences that you had as a child or potentially, you know, if there's something going on in your partnership with your partner that maybe underneath, I mean, you're not acknowledging that maybe underneath you don't feel like it's stable and safe. That's another big red flag. Your body is going to respond to those subconscious thoughts. If, if you are always arguing with your partner, then there's a subconscious thought of like, it's not safe. We cannot be parents. How can we parent a child? We're going to be terrible parents and we're going to screw up this kid. And, you know, this is where, and I, we have this conversation often with women and I, and I have this conversation with them in our sessions is this is a time for you to get very real and honest with yourself about those thoughts that you're having. And, and it's, this is where it's good to have a journal and just write things down when you have these thoughts pop into your head, it's very common. It's, it's a really is a time to get very real about your thoughts and emotions and potential traumas in the past and seeing if maybe it's worth addressing those and working on those before you start going and controlling every other aspect of your diet and your sleep and your exercise and your routine and every supplement you put into your mouth. If there's traumas and there's subconscious beliefs there, you can't out lifestyle that sometimes. You have to work on the emotional side. Yeah. And that's why we coach couples because in the beginning I was just coaching women and it was like missing the whole other equation of like, wait a minute, you see people together and sharing, you know, what it's like to go through this journey. And then these things start popping up and 
maybe you know unresolved issues and this journey journey will either bring you closer together or, or tear you apart so continuing to work on your relationship as you go through this because each partner either man, man or women w- woman will will handle it differently but it doesn't mean you know they're not equally equally in pain and another one we see would be you know if if you've been told maybe your only option is donor egg or you've got a very you know really any kind of infertility diagnosis can be devastating because you're like even though you have the label you know we don't focus on the label but even though you have that label there can be doctor could say this is the only way that it's going to happen that the only thing that'll work for you is donor eggs or the only thing that's going to work for you is you must do an IVF um and so a well-meaning practitioner if they don't know about the functional approach is going to tell you this and that becomes embedded in your soul almost almost so how can EFT help with that yeah it it becomes an identity um and this is something that again is very common we have to ask the question well then who are you if you don't have poi or who are you if you don't have pcos Um, And so sometimes what happens is we get so focused on our diagnosis. That's what we become. We become our diagnosis. And so we're signaling to our body. We're sending signals to the body of like, well, this is who we are. So this is must be the way it happens. And again, we are blocking off any other possibilities of what can happen and any other possibilities of who we can become. I've often had this question with women before, and I've said to them, and, and it brings tears every single time, but when we're going through this work, it's always important to question the narrative in your head. Um, and I've said, well, who are you if you don't become a mom? And they say to me, I have no idea. I don't even want to think about it. And I said, well, you need to know who you are as a person so that you are able to then move forward. You are, you know, once you have a a child, you you know, that diagnosis is not you. And so some people get so stuck on the, I am POF. Like I, 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 there, that's what I am. That's the only thing that's possible. I have to do donor eggs. There's no other possibility out there. This is my identity. And so with EFT, we can work on releasing that tight grip on having that as your identity and really working with your subconscious to opening it up to other possibilities and not focusing and having your entire identity wrapped up in that diagnosis. Yeah, I like when you say the tight grip because it does like that, especially that kind of diagnosis. Well, any of them, it does have a, a tight grip on you and getting myopically focused on it and not even being able to see a way out, but, but being able to release like you are not your diagnosis, being able to release that. Yeah. And this happens not just with fertility diagnosis, but you see this often with people with autoimmune diseases or cancers or, you know, diabetes is like they, that becomes their identity. And, and that's where you, you know, it makes it very hard for you to move beyond that because you have basically told your body, this is who I am. So you have to bring me all of the reasons why this is who I am. And um, another question, it's a very difficult question to ask yourself. And I have asked women in in sessions is what are all the ways that you can become a mother? And a lot of times I'll say, well, getting pregnant and having my own baby, that's the only possibility. And I've said, okay, but have you d- explored all of the possibilities that are out there? And are you okay with those possibilities? That sometimes is a very good question. You know, especially in women who maybe are older and into their 40s. And, you know, there's always a possibility. So never say never. But have you really sat down and explored and allowed your mind to explore the possibility? Maybe I could have a surrogate. Maybe I could adopt. There's so many possibilities that a lot of women don't allow themselves to be open to thinking about those other possibilities that, again, that blocks that blocks the ultimate goal of becoming a mother. And it's a, t- it's a very tough conversation to have and it's tough thoughts that people don't want to have. They don't want to go there. But by having such tight control and restriction on this is how it needs to happen for me, you are blocking every possibility that 
potentially could be out there for you to get to that goal of becoming a mother or a parent. Yeah. And hearing someone saying, oh, you know, why don't you just adopt? Or like, these are all those, those typical um, trigger words, right? In the, in the infertility community and, and could send you down a downward spiral. But to see, this is about exploring because if, if some of the, if you hear some of these words, if you see it on Instagram, wherever you're looking, Facebook, and it sends you down a downward spiral, someone tells you to relax and you're like, how dare you tell me to relax? You want to slap them. Or if they say, look at adoption, you're like, screw you. Like if there's a lot of very, um, like anger or strong emotion in there, that is for you for us to, to, to dig into that. And because it could be deflecting with anger, with, you know, a quick comeback. And, you know, the, if, if, if people are, even the comment of when will you have quick kids, which I've talked about before, is kind of an innocuous comment similar to, you know, how's the weather when people are trying to make general conversation? Is it, is it appropriate for people to say this? And do we want to change the conversation? Yes. But you know, when someone says that, what happens to you? Do you then see red and want to, you know, tell them every last bit of your fertility journey? Or do you like go back and, you know, ruminate that, ruminate on that thought for, you know, hours, weeks, what, you know, wherever it may be. So it is to those kind of things that obviously when we're going through this journey, it's, I I had people telling me, you know, on this journey, whenever they saw family, they, they couldn't even see families. They couldn't see, they couldn't see pregnancies. Uh, When they saw like a pregnant person, a baby, a family, this, this case it was secondary infertility, like all of that was like so painful. And so to be able to work through some of those emotions and like it's easier said than done, but uh, EFT really, really will will get quite to the, the heart of it fairly quickly and then help release it. And it's still, you know, you still need to do do the work. But as I say, Brandy was saying, you don't need, sometimes you don't even know these things are there. You're just like running around pissed off at the world going, why is everybody trying to, you know, saying these things that are so hurtful and I'm, and then you're just, left in either seething with anger or, you know, crying in despair. Yeah. Another big emotion that is there is guilt. You, you mentioned, you know, when people are triggered by they, they can't see women that are pregnant or their friends and they feel guilty. They have so much guilt. They, they'll say to me, yep. I am happy for my sister, but when I found out she was pregnant, it made me so jealous and angry. And so they felt guilty. And then that guilt, the guilt is a very strong emotion. And so that guilt, again, will have a grip on you. And, and, and it just all of these deep seated, intense emotions, anger is intense, guilt can be intense, it's sending neural chemicals to your body and messages to your body that's actually blocking you from being able to move forward. For some of you, I know this sounds extremely overwhelming. And you're thinking to yourself, I I can't even go there. I, I can't. But what I can tell you is that, like Sarah said, it's, it's not always an easy process to actually deal with the emotions and the traumas and process them. But it can be quick. It can be done. Sometimes you need one session. Sometimes you need 10, but it can be done. And when you have those intense emotions like guilt and anger, you have to release those before you can, you can even get to the pain. And that's where it's really important because when you can release the anger and you can release the guilt and you can process it, and you can un- uncover the pain that's underneath there and then actually feel that pain, grieve it, go through that process, you it's like a weight that is lifted off your shoulders. You will start to recognize and see yourself like, I don't react the same way to everyday things anymore. Things that used to trigger me no longer trigger me. I have a client that we didn't do any of the other functional stuff. All we did was EFT and we worked on all of the emotions and she, I am happy to say she is pregnant and she did the work. It was tough. We went through a lot of sessions and you know, nine or 10 sessions and worked on a lot of things but she came out on the other side now feeling empowered, standing up for herself, being confident in her thoughts and emotions, recognizing when something is bubbling up inside and saying, ooh, doesn't feel good. I need to process it. And she'll go to EFT now to process this emotion. So it's not always comfortable and it's not always easy in terms of how, how you know, it's, it, sometimes it's a hard thing that you need to acknowledge and process. But it can be done in a gentle and in a safe way where you can feel safe, 
you can release it and you will feel better on the other side. Will I tell you that just doing EFT alone is going to fix your infertility diagnosis and you'll become pregnant? I wish I could say 100% that that's the case, but unfortunately, it's not always the case. But what I can tell you is that working on all of these emotions, releasing them, getting more in tune with what your body is telling you, uncovering your limiting beliefs will change your life moving forward in a very positive way. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the it's the brave thing to do. It's like courageous to show up and like address the pain and is is it easy? No, but I think EFT gives us a, a really um a really great tool to be able to, to to process this these painful emotions and depending on how they're showing up for you. And another thing that we see is that people not believing they can be happy until they're pregnant. We talked a little bit about this, but um you know, putting joy on hold, you know, protecting yourself from, and it's good to set boundaries, but maybe not even going forward with your life. You know, you stay at a lot of this time, this happens a lot. People get stuck at the same job because they're like, they're waiting until they get pregnant. So they're stuck at a job that they may just actually despise and it's sucking the life out of them. They may be, you know, some social issues that they may be in certain um, social circles that they're not happy in, like a whole bunch of things in your life may get stuck on hold. And because they're waiting, they can't be happy until they're pregnant, which, you know, having us, we've done a number of podcast episodes on this of being able to have, have joy now. And that's what helps to then be able to navigate this journey. Anything you can talk about with EFT for that? You know, when situations like this come up, where we tend to go in these situations is a lot of times that stems back to a feeling of not being worthy. Um, And I know that might seem weird, but you deep down don't feel worthy of being happy unless you get a certain outcome. So you are going to punish yourself by keeping yourself in situations that keep you miserable until you get to that goal because you are not deserving. It's a very, very common <laughs> subconscious belief and underpinning in um, you know, people who, who do that to themselves. They disallow themselves from having joy and they will not you know, respect themselves enough to realize that this is not the job that I want and I deserve better and move forward. They will put their life on hold and almost punish themselves until they have a baby because they don't feel worthy. And that unworthiness can sometimes be a root because you might then have that subconscious belief, I am not good enough and I am not worthy enough to have a child and become a mother. And so we will you know, there are so many rabbit holes that you can go down with with EFT to uncover some so many different limiting beliefs and different different situations. Um, but that is the most common theme that I see with putting your life on hold and not finding joy is is the feeling of being unworthy, and that's a big one. Yeah, and that's a common theme a lot with limiting beliefs. But the, the the big overarching one is I'm not worthy which, you know, is, and, and you may not even, again, there's some, there's some conscious ones where you may not even think that you're like, oh, I think I'm great. But then as we dig deeper, well, wait a minute, where, where are you, where are you stopping yourself or um, not allowing yourself to be happy? And it might, and, and it's, you know, with the fertility journey, um, obviously no one chooses to go through this. But most people on the other side are like, damn, look at all the stuff I, I learned from this. Now hearing that when you're going through it, you may want to, reach through the podcast here and slap me, but it is to, to work on your triggers and work on your stuff now. Cause it is kind of those, those lessons that to like to dig into. And, um, I think with the, with the worthy piece, if you're like, wait a minute, I'm, I got to stay unhappy and here because I'm, I've got to do everything. It's, it's all focused on having the baby and forgotten about, like I do it when I start coaching the people, I will do like a wheel of life and infertility imp- impacts all aspects of life. And a lot of it is like self-care and like self-acceptance and that kind of piece too. So it can be, it just brings up a lot of triggers, obviously. And that's why EF- EFT can get to get to the heart of it and help help release some of these things. And so another common one, we've talked about this a little bit, but if you can't visualize a positive outcome, like you just can't, you can't see yourself pregnant, you can't see a baby, you can't see a toddler, I coach people on this a lot. Um, and then it's it's sort of stuck in that, um, very negative mindset thinking like, you know what, this, this is not never going to work for me. So how, how can EFT help? So that in this situation, that's where I would, I would have them 
list to me all of the reasons why it's not going to work, why they think it's not going to work and why they can't, because there's, if you can't visualize it, there's something that your brain is telling you that's counteracting your ability to visualize something positive. So I would have somebody list out all the reasons why, and we'll tap on them. We will tap on them and we will, we will work through them and we will release all of those negative beliefs as to why it's not going to work for you. It could be, well, I tried before and it didn't happen. Okay, well, that was before. That's not now. Let's tap on that. Let's let's get rid of that negative belief. And it may sound silly, but as you start to peel away the layers of the onion, they, they start, you know, as you're peeling away, uh, even if you think of like cabbage, I know this is like a weird analogy, but on the very outside, the leaves on the cabbage are really tight and they're hard to get off and you really have to work hard to peel them. But as you keep peeling them away, it gets easier and easier. And that's what happens with EST. When we start kind of working on the big things on the outside, which are a lot of times the negativity, and we do focus on the negativity, which does seem counterintuitive when we're working on emotions and and trying to get to a positive outcome. But you need to focus on those negative things so that you can feel them and release them. And as we start releasing those those bigger ones, more things just start to fall away more easily. And then your brain opens up and you start to see the possibilities and it becomes easier. That's where with EFT in those situations, we would just say, okay, let's write out all the reasons you think this is not going to work for you and let's address each one individually and see where it takes us. Yeah. And so common themes worry a lot of, a lot of people stuck in the, you know, the either catastrophizing about the future or worrying or ruminating about the past. So there's one to what's, so what would you do with, do with that one then bring, bring it out and talk to them. About. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're, why do you worry? What are you worried about? What is going to happen? So, so they'll, you know, and again, I, when we go through sessions, sometimes I am pushing you a little bit. And I'll say, you know, they'll, they'll say, well, then this will happen. Okay, so, so what? So, you know, how, what are you going to deal with? And so when you start questioning all of those worries, what happens is your brain will start to, when you add a question in, the brain will have to, tries to look for an answer. And so when you does that, it actually then is allowing your brain to open up to like, oh, well, maybe that's not a problem or maybe I can just do this. And then that addresses that worry. Um, and a common worry is, well, how can we afford it? So then again, okay, well, how can you afford it? What can you do differently to afford it? Like, what are some things that you could do to afford it? And your brain will start to come up with ideas. And it's so interesting because in sessions, you don't even know that this is where we're going to go, but you'll start giving off answers. And you're like, I never thought of that before, but it just came to my mind because we're focusing on it and we're tapping on those points and we're releasing that stuck energy and we're allowing you to process and allow other thoughts and ideas to come in. So um, worry is a big one. It, it's worry about being able to afford it, worrying about being able to be a good parent, worrying about how you're going to feel when you're pregnant. Are you going to feel sick because you've heard horror stories from your mom and your aunts about how sick they felt? Worried about, oh my goodness, I'm excited to do this, but I heard so many horror stories from my friend who have two-year-olds and potty training. Oh, I can't, I can't handle that. Like there's so many different worries that can come up. And we just tap through them and we question those beliefs and we allow you to process them. So again, like I said at the top, there are so many things you can use EFT for. And it really is just a process of acknowledging it, questioning it, and then allowing your body to feel the emotion and process it and release it. And it can, it can happen pretty quickly. Another one, the big one is uncertainty. Stuck in the middle of this, in the middle of a struggle. There's a beginning and an end. Right now we're stuck in the messy middle. So that uncertainty can just drive, especially a controlling type A person, well, really anyone, batty. So uncertainty of not really knowing, will it work? I'm not sure if it's going to work. When? And trying to control the timing. Let's just talk about uncertainty. Yeah. And that it, uncertainty goes hand in hand with control. And, and this is where I, a lot of times I work in, you know, having faith in the process, having faith in your body. So with uncertainty, a lot of times there's also that disconnect 
with you and your body. You don't trust that your body knows what it's doing. You, you can't trust it because it's let you down before. You know, if, if your body knew what it was doing, you'd be pregnant by now. So there's a lot of mistrust there, which leads you to uncertainty, which leads you to try to control. And so again, this is where when something like this happens, we're going to dig into, okay, where are all the places in your life where you feel uncertain and you are not trusting the process and you are not having faith in the process? And a lot of times that comes down to they've controlled every aspect of their life. They've controlled their education so they can get the best job. They've controlled their workouts and, and you know, how they feel so they can feel good in their skin and, and do whatever they want. They've it's a lot of times it does come down to control, but it also is a mistrust in in your body. Again, when we start tapping on that that mistrust with the body and being angry with the body, there's a lot of tears that will start to flow because you acknowledge the fact that, yeah, I'm angry and mad and I think my body is broken and I don't know what's going to happen next and I don't know how to fix it and I don't know what it's going to look like. And so just feeling that emotion and accepting the unknown and then moving past that and moving into having faith and being connected to your body. This is very, very common in almost every single person that I tap with with infertility. Yeah, and crying is the release. Then you can start fresh. And another one, a big one is comparison. So obviously following people on on Instagram or Facebook and and seeing, you know, other people seemingly having this perfect life with their children while you're stuck, you know, they're all moving on and and really like this comparison not just an in infertility, it can be in all aspects of life, but in infertility, it seems to be right in your face. So how can EFT help with comparison? Again, and then that's where we work through all of the different comparisons. This is very common with women who, you know, it's like, well, my mom only, you know, it only took her this long and she didn't have any problems. And she's asking me what my problem is. Or friends who say, well, it should only take you this long. Like, what's the problem? It's so easy to do. And so you are comparing yourself and again, trying to control (laughs) the situation. So first off, we work on that comparison and we work on the other people's opinions and lives are not yours and it's none of your business and release that. And then accepting the fact that you are on your own journey and that when the time is right for you in your life, it will happen the way it's supposed to. It's very hard for people to accept that. But when we can tap on the objection, so when I say that and we're tapping and we'll say it will happen when it's supposed to, an objection will usually come up on your mind. And then an objection is that's a sign that, okay, we need to tap on that objection because that's a negative belief. So that's... um you know, that's how I would, I would process the comparison is first of all, disallowing yourself to compare and basically acknowledging that it's nobody else's business, but your own and everybody's journey is different and accepting that and being okay with that. And then, then it is a matter of having faith and accepting that you are on your own journey and it will happen when it's supposed to and dealing with any objections that come into your mind that say otherwise. And I'm giving you guys some insights into (laughs) kind of the process that we go through, but that's really is what we do. You know, there are so many thoughts that our brains have all the time that we don't even, we can't even keep track of all the thoughts. And so when we're tapping, I'm having you focus on those thoughts. I'm, I'm asking you what's coming to your mind right now. And they'll say something and they're like, that's weird. Like, I didn't even think that I was thinking that. Okay, but it's important that it came to your mind. So let's tap on it because it's obviously something that's there that you didn't recognize that's blocking you. Yeah, I like that cabbage thing where you're peeling and peeling and peeling and and things Mm -hmm. come out and you're like, damn, where'd that come from? Yeah, those leaves start to fall off way easier than they did in the beginning. Any other thing, thing you want to share? Any other success stories with EFT? I think, or, or you want to talk about that the one you had there with the the one that I think she had, she had had multiple miscarriages. That one you were working on. Um, I mean, yeah. There's just 
I've seen so many different changes in people with EFT and not not just related to, you know, pregnancy and infertility, but, you know, people struggling with anxiety, um, people struggling with self-doubt in their business. It is, like I said in the beginning, it's not always easy because you do have to feel the emotions. You have to be real with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to not minimize your feelings. Um, I think that's really, really important as women. We yeah, minimize ourselves so much. And so I would encourage you to stop minimizing your feelings and have a journal just for two or three days and it may feel annoying, but really listen to those thoughts that are coming into your head and write them down. You will be surprised by some of those thoughts. And that can give you some clues into some of those subconscious beliefs that you have, because that's a re recording in the back of your head that just keeps repeating itself. And then it's telling the story of your life and you don't even know that it's happening. Um, so don't minimize how you feel. It, you know, really acknowledge yourself, no matter how small a trauma could be, it could be a simple comment that somebody said that just triggered a deep seated belief, really journal and get honest with yourself, be willing to be open to going through the process of really feeling those feelings. A lot of people are scared to feel those feelings. It's not comfortable. So be willing to become uncomfortable, so that you can see you know, the sunshine on the other side, because it does feel amazing when you can get to the other side and release that really heavy stuck emotion or really heavy trauma. Yeah, because otherwise we end up numbing ourselves out like I did for years with shopping or with other people do with drinking or with with drugs or with with, you know, not not addressing the issues, so you end up numbing your, you know, overeating instead of addressing the pain. And yeah, so if EFT is feeling right for you, as I say, it's included in our couples coaching program, and that and we, we really with the functional approach really taking a mind body spirit approach so looking at the functional testing you know looking at the physical stressors and looking at those those mental emotional stressors and EFT we just find is just an awesome tool and we we love that so if you want to if you can seriously considering uh, working with us you can just book a call or go to fab fertile fab fertile and click on book a free call and we'll see if you're a good fit for our program so thanks again brandy for coming on i love i love talking about this topic and i know it's really really special and imp important with you as well Thank you. Melatonin is important for female fertility. It helps regulate hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythms. Plus it helps determine the frequency and duration of the menstrual cycle. Plus it impacts sperm count and motility. Blue and green light negatively impact our melatonin production. That's why we recommend blue blocks, blue and green light sleep glasses to all our one-to-one -one clients. Simply go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout to receive your 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast. Hey there, I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the supercharger fertility discovery call is for action takers, really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B fertile.com and click on book a free call. Call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, fabfertile.com and click on book a free call. I'm excited to offer you a special gift. If you are a U.S. resident, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55444. You'll be prompted to enter your email address and you'll receive our fertility yoga download. In this 20 minute intro video, we focus on a calming and peaceful practice to connect back to our heart. These simple yoga poses can help quiet negative thoughts and make you feel more in control. Download it now and get started today. For US residents, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55 Four 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 for non-US residents go to Yoga Freebie F R E E B I E to access your special gift. That's yogafreebie.com to access the free fertility yoga download. The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment nor is it to be construed as such. 
We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.